Hey, it's Nathan with crazyoutmarketing.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about creating a product in ClickFunnels 2.0. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So here we are inside of the dashboard and we wanna to go to products. And ClickFunnels already created a product for us, my workspace's first product, but we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new one from scratch. So let's go to create product here. And now we can go ahead and select if we want to create a digital product or a physical product or a bundle. Now the bundle option is not available yet, but I guess it's coming soon. So maybe by the time you're creating a product, you could create a bundle if you want to. But anyway, we're gonna start with a digital product and then we'll probably make a physical product later on in this training. And the next step we need to go ahead and do is create a name for our product. So I'm gonna call this ClickFunnels 2.0 course. And then I could add a description, the best course in the world. And we'll go ahead and create the product. Now we have different price types, so we could do a one-time offer or a subscription. So this would charge your customer, you know, $10 every one month, or you could do days or weeks or quarters or years. And also it has the option for a product having a trial. So you could offer a free trial for, you know, seven days, and then it's $10 per month. Or you could do a paid trial where it's a seven day, $1 paid trial or something like that. So a bunch of different options here for subscriptions. And then a payment plan. This would be if somebody makes three equal payments of $49.99, then they have lifetime access to your course. So let's say $49.99, charge customer every month. And amount of payments is three payments. So after those three payments, they would have lifetime access. Also, you could offer a trial with a payment plan as well. So a bunch of different options here for however you want to sell your course. We're just going to do a one time. We'll do a $1 product, set the price. Now we can adjust some more settings. So of course, we have a product name and description. So if we want to change those, we can go ahead and do that. We could go ahead and add an image for our product. So I'm going to go ahead and add a picture of a funnel real quick. But of course, Typically, you probably want to add a picture of your actual product, not a stock image. Coming on down here, we have the pricing, and you can see that I have a $1 amount. I'm going to go ahead and click on this gear real quick because it gives us a few more options. So I can go ahead, and this is the actual amount, uh, the compare out amount. So usually, this course is $3, and then the name, so this could be anything I want to display as a price. So in this, so sale price for example, and then product cost, this is used to calculate your profit. So if you have a product cost associated with what you're selling, so if you're selling you know, a shirt for $10 and it costs you $5 to make, well then you put $5 as your product cost here. But since this is a digital course, I'm not going to add a product cost. And then shown at checkout, we can go ahead and make this visible because we want them to see the prices that they're going to pay. I'll go ahead and click on save. And as you might notice, you can add multiple prices to the product if you want to. So maybe you have you know, a one-time offer of $400 for your course, or you could do a subscription for $30 a month forever, or a payment plan where it costs $500 total, but they can break it up into months. So you can have different pricing options depending on how you wanna do it. So that is very nice that it gives you that much flexibility. Also, you could add taxes. So is a product taxable? And what tax code does it fit into? And you could look at the tax codes over here, which is way above my pay grade, and I'm not going to get into it. But if you need to keep track of the taxation, you could go ahead and go through these steps over here. I wanna uncheck this taxable situation. And then we have inventory and shipping. So if you have SKUs, you can go ahead and plug that in here. Typically this is more for physical items. You can plug in your SKU and it's usually used to connect to a fulfillment center as well. And speaking of fulfillment, you could go ahead and select this if fulfillment is required. And it looks like they're going to offer the option to track the quantities available or right now it's don't track quantity, but then we have locations and stuff like that. And also, if this is a physical product, we could go ahead and select the weight and the country of manufacturer and stuff like that. So some different options if you're selling a physical product compared to a digital product. Purchase action. So this is where we give people access to the course that I've created. So let's go ahead and select this plus button. Oh, it wants me to save it first. So we'll go ahead and click OK to save. And now I can go ahead and select the course that I want to give people access to. So we'll select that right there. Now I could open this up and give like different levels of access depending on, you know, if I wanna give them only access to one module, I could go ahead and do that, but I wanna give them access to the full course. So a lot of control over how you give people access to your training material. So they can gain access to this course right here. Also, I wanna go ahead and give them community access. 
So I want to give them community access to general chit chat and also training. And I could also select the topics inside as well. So if I had unique topics, I could go ahead and select them depending on how my communities are set up. And I have a vid another video on communities if you're unfamiliar with how to set up a community, but we're gonna give them access to all of that. Also, since we're here, you might notice this digital asset access as well. So you can give people access to, you know, just a digital asset. So instead of creating a whole course where somebody has to go and log in and all that stuff, you could just give them a digital asset so you could upload a file and then they could just access that file and they don't have to go through creating a membership and all that other stuff. So if you're just sending like a PDF document or something, you could go ahead and upload it and send it and share it with people by sharing it as an asset like listed here. Finally, there are variants right here. So if you are selling a physical product, you could add, you know, size, color, material, Material or create new options. So if you want to do size, you know, small, medium, large, and so on. So of course that has to do with the physical products, probably more so than the digital products. But anyway, there is that option for variants and you can add other options as well. So you can have lots of different variants. So that way you can sell all sorts of stuff. And so this is much more advanced than ClickFunnels Classic. If you're familiar with familiar with it. It was very limited in the products. Whereas ClickFunnels 2.0, they've taken it next level. It's getting up there on Shopify's level. So it's a very solid platform for selling your products and services. And scrolling on down, we also have SEO and sharing. So you can go ahead and edit this. So that way, if somebody goes to your particular product page, this is the information that would show on Google or on Facebook or on Twitter uh, when somebody shares that link. So this is how you change the SEO and sharing information. We'll go ahead and update the product. All right, so for sales channel visibility, there's online store. So if you have set up an online store, which I have another video on the store. So if you're interested in doing that, link in the description down below. If you want this product to show up in that online store, then you would go ahead and tick this block. If you're only using this product in a sales funnel, then you would not tick this block. So you don't need to select this block if you're using it in a sales funnel, but only if you want it to show up in your online store. And if you're not sure what online store means quickly, it's basically like a Shopify store where you can see a list of products that are being sold and you could go there, you could add it to your cart and check out and all that type of stuff. So maybe you're not even using the store feature on your website and you're just building funnels, in which case you can leave this unchecked. Customer center, means that the product will show up when somebody logs into the customer center. So here I am in a customer center and I can see that I have access to the ClickFunnels 2.0 course and I could go ahead and open it right here. And so basically it just makes the course show up in the customer center, which I think is a nice option so people can see what they have access to or if they don't have access to it, they could go ahead and buy it from within the customer center as well. Organization, so if you wanna organize your products some sort of way, you can do tags, maybe courses or something like that. Like if you have courses and then you have shirts or something, you could organize it. You can also set up manual collection. So if you want to have a collection of courses, a collection of shirts, you know, whatever. Different ways to keep your products organized. And also this happens on the storefront where people could sort through different tags or different collections in order to find what they're looking for. So if you have like a, a large collection of items, it's good to keep it organized and good to have a store. So that way people can browse your entire collection. But if you're just using funnels, again, you might not need all this other additional stuff. And coming back down, we have advanced settings. We'll click on show here. So we could go ahead and change the template if we want to. So if you want a custom template for this particular product, you could go ahead and override the template page. If, and finally, you can make it so that if an individual goes to this product, so if you turn on this online store option and they try and go view this product, well, it actually will bring them to a funnel in order to buy the product. So I don't have any funnel set up yet in this particular account, but if I had a funnel for this product, I could have people go directly to that funnel instead of to the product page. And then we have the page live mode. So right now it's live and I'm selling a product, but I could turn this off and then it's in test mode and I could use a test credit card. So coming up here, let's go ahead and click on this eyeball thing right here and we can take a look at what our product page actually looks like. So here it is, our checkout page, check out and get your product below, ClickFunnels 2.0 course. It's $1, the best course in the world. Here's the order form and we can see how my pricing looks. So it's $3 crossed out and then it just says sale price. So we can see that maybe I did something wrong here and maybe I wanna come back over here and edit the price. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that name 
and do save. And then we'll go ahead and refresh this page. And so there we go, that looks better. People can see that it was three, now it's only one. And then they could go through the checkout process and enter their information. And of course, if I wanna change the description or anything like that, I just come back to my product here. I can go ahead and edit away. I can add you know, an image of my product. Let's go ahead and throw in another picture of a funnel. We'll throw this one in and we'll update the product. And we'll go ahead and refresh the page and see what it looks like now. And for whatever reason, it's not updating the description as I click refresh. So maybe ClickFunnels has a little bug going on. But anyway, this is what the product order form page looks like. And if we wanna change the look and feel of it, we can come back out to our sites right here. And we can go to customize. And I have another video on updating the theme and also the style guide. So if you need more information on what I'm doing right here, link in the description down below. I have other videos on it. But we come to storefront here and we could go to product and we can see what our product page looks like. So maybe I want to get rid of some of this padding at the top and just kind of clean it up a little bit. We can see what it would look like. So there's a product name, the price, the image, and the description. So for whatever reason, my image and my description aren't updating. And of course there it is now. So my image is now and there's my description. You can see it sticks a little image on the order form as well. But if I wanna go ahead and you know update this page, I would go ahead and change stuff around, like clear the padding, or maybe I don't like this whole section right there. So I'll delete it and do save. And now come back over here and this big area should be gone hopefully. And there we go, that section is now gone. Of course I could come back over here and make other adjustments to my page. I could also edit my checkout form. Now I have another video all about the checkout form because it is pretty advanced and there's a lot of functions in it. So I have a whole separate video on the checkout form. Link in the description down below if you need to learn more about it. But you could go ahead and customize it right here as well. And I wanna jump in here real quick because I just noticed something. This is the old checkout form. So it's having some issues with customization. So if I go to add element and I look for checkout right here, I can get the new checkout form and add it. And then I can go ahead and delete this old one out of here. And then I can go ahead and do the customization and all that type of stuff. So if for some reason you're having issues with your checkout form on your template, then you might need to go ahead and delete it out of there and add a new one. So that way it has all the proper resources and stuff like that. So I just want to point that out real quick, but I'm happy with it for the sake of this example. Now, of course, this is not like a very pretty product page for selling a course. You probably do want a sales page and all that other stuff. And that's why you go ahead and you build a funnel, which is a whole other video and topic. But I did want to show you that when you create products, you also do get a page. So somebody could just go and straight up buy the product without creating a funnel and all that other stuff. So depending how you want to do your products, you could make them visible or not. So let me come back over to the product and I don't want it visible in a store or anything at this point in time because I'm just gonna use it in the middle of a funnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and update the product. And now I can go ahead and still use this product in a funnel so somebody could buy it or do a one-click upsell or something like that. And so that is how you go about creating a product within ClickFunnels. I did say I might talk about how to create a physical product. However, I kind of went over that when we were going through these steps. So there's inventory and variants and stuff like that. So. If you have physical products, then you would select some of those options. And I think this video gives you a good outline of at least how to get started building products. Now, definitely watch the videos on the store and the funnel so that way you can see how to actually integrate them and sell them. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And or please check out crazyeyemarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.